Hey, how y'all doing? It's Craig here again. Howdy, guys. Husqvarna 576 non-auto tune. This was the eBay purchase. Um, it's the one that's got the bad um, crank pin journal, crank pin and, and lower rod journal. Um, it's got a couple bearings missing out of it. I think the if this has got a cage, I think pieces of the cage. I'm not sure if that's caged or not. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> about a year ago, I done a, a video on a Husqvarna 575 that I had purchased off eBay. No, purchased that one off my buddy for like, I think it was 10 or $15. It was a trash pile find. He was going to haul it off to the scrap yard. So, um, I saved it from a, a fate of doom. And had all intentions of putting that saw together. Um, I actually bought it had a, a bearing spun in the PTU um, side case in the pocket. The bearing actually spun in the pocket and enlarged the pocket. So I, I actually did find a case half for it. And there's a couple other things. But now with the advent of buying this 576 with a bad crank, uh, that 575 has now become a parts donor. So I will no longer be resurrecting that, but I am going to use it for parts to resurrect this one. The cylinder on this one was actually in really good shape. Uh, no scoring at all. Hope we can, without getting too much light in there, hope we can see that. It's just got your your obvious wear marks. There are some pieces embedded into the top of the cylinder. I did show this on an earlier video, but I can get down in there and get them dug out. Get in there with a little bit of sandpaper. Smooth that out a little bit. But I'm going to just run a ball hone or a flex hone down through here and um, hone that up a little bit. You might remember this is the piston. You know, it's it's pretty bad shape. Marks here on the bottom. But I'm going to trash this piston. I'm going to buy a new piston, new set of rings. Reuse the OE cylinder head jug. I'll put the 575 crank in here along with new bearings and seals or seal. The um, PTO side bearing has the integrated seal in it. It's proprietary. So what we're doing right now is we're going to break this down. We're going to split the cases. I had a request um, here a while back about how I split cases on these. Um, I don't know if what I use will actually work on the non-auto tune because it relies on the um, bosses that's drilled and tapped for the generator to be used. So I'll be right back. I got a visitor. Uh, let me pause this for a second. Okay, we're back. That was my daughter showed up. Wanted her oil changed in her 2016 Chevrolet Cruze. Has a diesel in it. A little two liter, four cylinder, turbocharged. That little thing will impress the crap out of you. It runs. I know I was impressed. But anyway, uh, can't remember exactly where I was at. I think I was talking about um, splitting the cases. Uh, the tools that, because, uh, let, let me just start right here. This is the case splitter you get from Hutzel. Okay, works good for like the 372s and, and the other ones that have an open crankcase. And I know that there's been other people show this. Walt, uh, I think maybe even Matteo showed it. But this physically will not fit in there because it's got stuffers on the crank. The stuffers are nothing more than cups. Just a cup that goes over the end of the crankshaft and goes up and sets on, on the counterweight throw. And 
basically as the name implies it stuffs the, the crankcase it makes the volume of the crankcase actually smaller um, uh, you know obviously the engineers at Husqvarna has done their research and um, stuffers work uh, give them more power uh, you know I, I honestly don't know how it gives more power because you're reducing the area of the crankcase so you're going to have less of a charge that you can push up into the cylinder. In, in my opinion, I think a bigger crankcase, more volume in the crankcase, would allow more of a charge to be pushed up into the cylinder as the piston's coming down. But like I said, the engineers have done their homework and I'm sure they know what they're, they're talking about. And I'm sure that they've got the most power out of it that they can with this setup. But as you can see, because of that stuffers in there, there's no way to physically get it down over the crankshaft. It physically won't fit in there because of them stuffers. So, um, I had a request a while ago, I don't know, a month or so, two months, how I split these types of cases. On the 576 auto tunes, there's a generator coil alternator ring in behind this flywheel and it's held on by some some bolts and you can take them bolts out remove that alternator and I fabricated a little piece here and all this is is just a piece of C channel I drilled some holes where I get the bolts into the bosses that's in behind this flywheel that are tapped, drilled and tapped. <clears throat> Just a regular bolt, a nut, and a washer. And I put it on there. Okay. And then I use a wrench to hold the nut. And then I use a wrench to turn the bolt. And as I'm turning the bolt, the bolt goes down, which pushes on the crankcase, which pushes, or actually pushes on the crankshaft, which pushes against this plate with the bolts in it, and it forces the two apart. Now, like I said, I'm not exactly 100% sure if them are drilled and tapped. Um, we'll have to see when we get in there. On the PT or on, yeah, on the PTO side, this is what I come up with to do these types of engines. And again, it's just a piece of C-channel slotted. And again, I just took a bolt, a couple washers, and I take an amount of wherever it needs to be. I like the slotted because I have the ability to get it adjusted. I actually put some nuts, or not some nuts, but some washers down on the studs there. And then that allows me to pull this up tight against the, the case. And then I get my bolt right over the crankshaft. And again, as I'm tightening this up, which is running the bolt down, it's actually pushing the crank, which is lifting the case, and on both sides, take a brass hammer and just tap, just tap on, on the nut there, you know, hit it, and then if it moves a little bit, put a little more tension, tap it again, and eventually it'll come off. Um, if it doesn't come off, then you can take and put some heat on it, and hopefully get it to release with that. So I'm not going to bore everybody with taking all the stuff off of this, but when I get it down to where I'm ready to split the case, I will come back and I'll show you splitting the PTO side with that. And if this is drilled and tapped, I'll show you splitting the mag side or the flywheel side with this. You know what? I will bore everybody tearing this apart. I've never used the fast forward option in my um, program, so I'll try that. If the fast forward, if I can't get it to work, then I'll just go ahead and, and trim this section out so it won't be so long.
quarter reducer, but I don't see it right offhand. That's a 13. So, next best thing, just get my half inch socket, get my half inch impactor wrench. There you go. That's all you need to get that off there. I can't remember if this fits under there or not. No, it doesn't. Okay. Sometimes I can get this underneath the flywheel and get it off, other times I can't. This is one of them that does not fit underneath. So how I do this, put the nut back on there. And I know there's polars where you can take these um, posts out of these dogs. And um, you know they, they go down in there and you can pull them off like that. But I found this to be just as easy. brass hammer. Just pick it up. What you're doing is, is grabbing underneath the flywheel or you could pick, pick it up like this. I just I try to pick it up underneath and with my thumb I'm just keeping it from rolling over. There it goes. And that's all there is to getting the flywheel off. So, in traditional threads, righty tighty, lefty loosey. This is left hand, it's backwards, so it's righty loosey, lefty tighty. <coughs> so, you want to reverse your gun from what it was just a second ago. And I may have to put a wood wedge down in there. Let me grab one here. I just take old 2x4 pieces and just cut wedges out of them. And remember we're going clockwise to get this off. Maybe. Okay, well, this one's on there. So, 
I'll be right back. Let me let me sit here and think about this for a second. Okay, what I decided to do, put a little bit of heat on it. I'm not going to put a whole lot on it. If I ruin the seals in the bearing, that's fine with me. Try not to ruin the oil pump drive. Try to keep all the heat up on it, up on top here. There, I'm starting to bubble. I can see the oil bubbling down inside of it. The crank's bad, remember, so it doesn't really matter to me if I ruin the crank here. I don't want to ruin the clutch if I can keep from it. Well, since I blowed out my fire, now's a good time to try it. Okay. <coughs> Wrong direction. Right direction. There it comes. It's all it took, just a little bit of heat, guys. torch up here. I think Ken in his live feed earlier today, I think he was asking, ooh that's hot, should have known that, stupid. He was asking what the one tool was you couldn't do without. If I had to pick one tool, I believe it would be the torch because it's amazing how many jams that torch can get you out of. Looks like the worm drive is still in good shape. I can't get it out until I get the brake assembly off. Okay, Phillips screwdriver, take the backing plate off, put it over here, take the cover off the brake mechanism. It's actually got one missing out of it, so I'll have to scavenge one of them from the 575. Put that over there. Uh, there we go. I just put the screwdriver right up in the end of the spring. Get it up out of there that way if it happens to take off it's going to hit the screwdriver instead of flying everywhere. Be careful your little spring there doesn't take off on you. Pull that up and out of there. I'll go ahead and throw it away. Well, that's broke, so I can just throw this away. But the flag was broken off of it, so I'm going to have to get a flag, and that can come off the 575 also. So I'll throw that away. The band can come up out of here now. Uh, maybe get my little pick down underneath there. Sometimes these can be a little cantankerous to get out. You just got to kind of work with it.
it's wanting to come out, but it doesn't want to release right there where the pin is. Put a little pressure underneath of it with my pick there, work it up and down. Looks like it might be coming now. I want my screwdriver. There she comes. Don't lose your little pin there. If you do, don't worry about it. Eighth inch drill bit on the smooth shank end. Just cut it to size and it'll work like a charm. I learned that from Walt from a fleet command dot com, or not dot com, but a fleet command on YouTube. Oiler worm gear looks good. Take the oiler out now. go. Here comes the oiler. Put it over here in the box. It'll get taken apart and cleaned up. Checked. While we're right here, pull the pickup tube and the screen out. Take it over here to the box. I'll put it down inside the cylinder since it's got a little bit of oil in it. There's something else. I don't know. Yeah, we're good. I didn't check to see if there was oil in it. That could have been a mess. Take your little spring pad out here. Put it in the box. Everything's off this side except for the dog. I'm going to leave the little rubber bumpers in. Oh, almost forgot my sleeve. Don't want to forget that. Okay, so everything, let's take on ahead and take the dog off. That was loose. Yeah, let's clean this one out. That's loose also. That's also all jammed in there. What I meant by jammed in is the side of it's been rounded over. So I'll have to get a new one of them. Throw the dog over here. Okay. I'm not going to worry about the bolts there. They can stay in place. That can stay in place. Let's take this wire off. This is your kill wire. It's time to go easy with that. Get that up out of there. Throw that in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one's got six case bolts to it. One. That one was loose. Two. Three. That one was loose. Four. Five. That one needs to be dug out. You can blow these out with compressed air also, guys. So there's two of these case bolts that was just sitting there. They wasn't even tight. Obviously, it wasn't leaking oil, but, okay, so now, at this point in the venture, 
we are ready to split the case. Got a little bit of oil running out there, not a whole lot. You can never get all the oil out, so I'll just kind of set it there. Get my new rag here. Okay. <clears throat> we will do the PTO side first. And like I said, when I put it on, this is how I'm going to do it. forgot how I done them. I run these washers up underneath the C channel there and put my nut up underneath there. So I'll need two washers. Just like so. So it can fall. But y'all get the idea. I gotta get a couple more washers for back there. Back here I just use the bar nets. I could cut this down a little bit, but leaving all them slots gives me the ability to get it adjusted to different sizes. You know what? That ain't going to work. That's a flywheel nut. This only had one bar nut on it, so I gotta grab another one here. Okay, I'm looking right at him and I can't see him because I'm blind as a bat. Don't you just love how you can't never find nothing when you're looking for it? And when you're not looking for it, it's laying right in front of you. So I'll use this. And just like my little quarter inch drive ratchet. Right there in front of me. Told you, I'm blind as a bat. Threads on the end, that's a little burgered up. need more than just one washer on there. That's all the way down. Let me go get some more washers here guys.
down good and snug. And what I've done is I've centered it so the crank is in the center of the slot. I've got the crank in the center of the slot. I'm going to take and put underneath here like that. Now as I turn this down and hold the nut, it's going to force down on the crank and it's going to pull up on the case. Get my brass hammer. So I need a couple three quarter inch wrenches here. on the top get the same desired effect. Well, maybe. And my phones are ringing. What we'll do is put the wrench on like this. Make sure we're centered on the crank. starting to split. Sometimes if you, you, you turn it and it gets real tight, just tap it like that and then that releases the tension. And then you can tighten it back down some more. Once it gets tight, tap it again and just keep going until you get the, the case split. But this one's coming with, with relative ease. I'm not putting much pressure on this at all. There we go. And it is a support. So now, this is a little cumbersome, I, I agree. But for you guys who don't have the money, go out and buy the, the case splitting tools that it takes to do this. This is just an inexpensive way to make a tool that you can split a case with as you can see. That bearing feels good but I'm not going to reuse it. Now, that's up and off of there. Pick up my washer here. Put my bolt back over there. Okay, so what I'm looking at here to make sure that the, the bearing isn't spinning in the pocket, it's not, so that's a good case half. That case half will now go into the box here and it'll get cleaned up. Now there is some oil in there. So I'm going to take and clean this out of there because I don't want this oil going everywhere. So I'll be right back. Okay, what I've decided to do, I'm going to go ahead and tap these. I've got some all thread here. It's M5 by 8. I've got two pieces. Actually, I've got three. And I'll 
tap this and that way we can push this one out. This is just an M5 by 8 tap. That's going to have to be drilled out a little bit. Yep, we're going to have to drill that out a little bit. So what I'll do get my calipers out here, get a get a drill bit's just a little bit smaller than what the tap is. We know the tap's M5 by 8. I guess it'd work better if I put it over on um, millimeters. So this is measuring 4.83 millimeters. That's 3, so I need a little bit bigger than that. And that tap tells you what size to use in metric. It's 3.67. There's 4.17. 4.85. I'm going to start with the smaller one first. If it doesn't give me enough room to run the tap down in there then I'll go to the bigger one because I don't want to overdo it and then not have enough for threads. Now you got to be careful because you don't want to go clear through the case. down about that far right now so that's all the farther I'm gonna go I don't want to bust through it that leaves me a little bit of room on the back side And the mess, the oily mess, is what you got to put up with when you do used saws like this. Okay, we've got about that much thread cut in there, so let's see if we can't get this crank pushed out. the other one.
Just running them on down in there, guys, all I'm doing. Okay. slide this down over here and the nut almost scooped up let's get the wrench on here let's get the wrench on the bottom where we go here I'll just do it like this there we go let's get a couple small washers Small flat washers to put over that. A couple on each side. Just to give it some support. They didn't need to be quite this long, but I wasn't sure you know the length that I needed when I Cut them down so I just cut them all to the length they are. Now I am aware that Husqvarna does make tools to do this. And this is pretty crude. I understand that. But it's only crude to the point to where it doesn't work if, if you're doing it. If you're doing it and it works for you, then it's, it's great. Okay. I'm going to have to have a wrench for that. Okay, here we go. Kind of tight there. Give her a couple taps. Get her up tight some more. A couple taps. Bring her up tight. A couple taps. And you should be able to see this coming out because it is moving. I got her coming. There she is, guys. There's the crankshaft out of the case. And here are the stuffer cups that I was talking about. They only go on one way. But I'm going to press this rod apart, this crankshaft assembly part, just to see what happened there. But that's all there is to it. Just be a little ingenious. Um, you know, it's it's not rocket science here. Whatever 
whatever you can come up with to do the job. That bearing's rough. Don't know if you can hear that. So this case needs to be split anyway. Okay. I ain't gonna bore you guys without with taking that apart there. But um like I said, I had a request to show how I split these types of cases. There are tools out there, but just a slotted C channel. It doesn't need to be this long. You know, a little bit shorter would be good, but this covers a, a wide array of different size saws. And this is just a piece of C channel. It was actually an old frame section from a Murray riding lawnmower, lawn tractor. The frame rusted in two, and I kept the, the frame rails. Uh, I keep pieces of metal. You never know when you're going to need something. But anyway, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.